Greetings, everyone. Raji Narizing here, transgender activist, author, and actress, currently on season two and three of the reality show Botched on the E! Network. So, have you all heard about the movie Hidden Figures? Very popular movie. It came out not too long ago about three African-American women that worked for NASA. And they were very influential in helping to get us America, to the moon, to outer space. And so, uh, these women, phenomenal African-American women, Katherine Johnson, Mary Jackson, and Dorothy Vaughn. And the movie's about their life story and their uh, time at NASA and the roles that they played in getting us to outer space. Of course, they did not get the credit that they deserved at the time, but the movie is basically telling the story of their life and giving them their accolades, the accolades that they definitely deserve. So there's a scene in the movie where one of the women, she gets promoted to a division where the scientists were working on the formula that would get us to outer space, get a rocket into outer space. And she was the one, actually, that came up with the solution, the, the right formula. But it was a whole department. They were all white people that worked there. And she was the only African-American woman in the department. So, you know, they had a coffee pot that was specially for her. Um, she couldn't use the white coffee pot. They had a little area for her. Um, and uh, when it came to using the bathroom, I mean... There was no bathroom in the building that she could use. So she had to literally run all the way across the other side of the campus to the colored bathroom where she would be able to use the bathroom. And, um, you know, she'd get in trouble because a lot of the times it would take her like, you know, like a long time to go to the bathroom. Not a lot of the times, all the times, because she had to literally run across campus. And um, so, you know, her, her white co-workers, the bathroom was right there in the department, so they would just go and go on a bathroom break and come back. But for her, it was like a journey. So, okay, I have my hidden figure story. Yes, Raji's hidden figure story. Oh my goodness, just recently in this country here in America, um, things are getting a little better for trans people. We still have a long way to go, but things are getting a little better, and uh, that's only in the last few years. Well, there's a company that I worked for, and um, I'm not going to name names, because I'm not the type to really throw people under the bus, but... Uh, I, so I won't even say where it was, but it was the company that I worked for. And um, I was not allowed to use any of the bathrooms except for one. And it was a huge building. I mean, like bigger than a football field. And the department that I worked in was on one side of the building. And the bathroom that I could use was on the other side of the building. And on top of it, the bathroom was only open until 4 p.m. It was like only the hours of the personnel department because that's where the bathroom was located. It happened to be like a, a unisex bathroom where you just go in and lock the door. So um, my shift, however, was actually um, for a time was from 11... No, sorry, from 12 to 8. And then it even went later. It, it was changed, and I started at, like, 3 to 3, and it went to 11. So, uh, for a time, I was working with hours that I couldn't use the bathroom. And even when I did have the opportunity to use that bathroom, it would take me so long to walk all the way across the building and do what I need to do and get back, that I would get in trouble and docked my for, for for using more time than my other coworkers. There were many days that I sat at my desk for eight hours and did not 
use the bathroom and I had to go. I mean, you know, but I held it. And I know, you know, I was at a meeting recently and um, it was one of the trans groups that I belong to. And uh, when I was sharing the story, one of the girls there, she's trans, she says, well, that was abuse. And, yeah, I guess you could look at it at that. At the time, I really needed a job. I also was determined to prove myself. Now, I would say probably out of the whole company, 70% didn't want me there. Okay? And then there were probably another, let's say, 10 to 15% that didn't care either way, and then the rest were, like, ones that did get to know me and rally around me, but it was not easy, and I stuck it out, and I proved myself, and even moved up. I was promoted a few times at the company, so, you know, I'd like to think that my time there, although it was very, very hard, and I was, especially in the beginning, was very discriminated against. I mean, I would sit in my car with my stomach in knots, not even wanting to go into the building because I knew it was like what I was going to have to face. It's hard enough for the average person to just go to work every day, but try going to work and having about 70% of your workforce, the people that you work with, um, again, you and try going to work and not being able to use the bathroom when you have to go try going to work and you're walking in a lunchroom and everyone just stops when you walk in everyone was engaged but then when you walk in everyone stops and it's like oh my god you know it's here <laughs> it was hell and um it eventually got better because I was determined, I stuck it out, and I'll tell you, I remember a day, and I've always been a person that wants to put my best foot forward, you know, whatever job I had, I just always tried to give it 100%. So this day, I come in, and, and I was very friendly with everyone, I was trying to really be the bigger person, and, you know, kind of understand that, well, maybe... Not everyone is comfortable or used to being around a trans person. So let me try to extend myself and show them, you know, the person that I am. And so I would go in and say good morning and be very friendly. And a lot of people wouldn't even acknowledge me. This one day I was rushing in and I walk in and there was a row of computers where, you know, they had rows where you'd sit at and you'd have your own little area. And um, I sat down, and there were some co-workers off to my um, right side. And I looked over, and they were looking at me, and I said, Hi, good morning. Not a word. They just stared at me. And in that moment, I got to tell you, I felt like I can't do it anymore. I'm trying, and I'm trying, and I'm trying to be nice. Like, what do I have to do for these people to at least connect with me. I mean, just say hi or good morning. You don't have to be my friend, but just common courtesy. And I was getting my computer ready and I just put my head down and I said, God, I can't take this anymore. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I just can't take it. And I was at my wit's end and I was ready to give up. And five minutes later, a supervisor comes over to me and she tells me to sign off my phone. And they take me into this office and she proceeds to tell me that we've been listening to your phone calls and you are like excellent on the phone and you'd go the extra mile for our customers. Um, we want to promote you to a division called High Value where you will only deal with our very, very rich clients and famous clients. And I got I gathered my stuff and she took me to that division. And I have to say, the people that worked in that division, they were a lot more friendlier. I think because, you know, everyone that 
was in that division had been promoted, they were, you know, they had that, that X factor like I did. And so that kind of was the beginning for things getting a little better where I had like maybe a 10% of my coworkers that began to at least accept me a little bit and treat me with dignity and, 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 and respectfully. But uh, yeah, I had to share that. That was my hidden figures moment. And I'm going to tell you, the years that, was, that I was there, and I stuck it out for some years, I would like to think that I helped to open the door for other trans people. Uh, I remember when I first started, the head of personnel told me that they didn't know if this was going to work out with me and that they know that I have other transsexual friends. Do not refer them to the company because they would not be hiring them. And so I hope that when I left, I at least showed people that, you know what, even though I'm trans, I could still show up to work and give it 100% and just do my best. And and so I left feeling like I, I made a difference. Anyway, love, peace, and blessings. My hidden figures moment, y'all.